Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. It's 9 o'clock. It is a Monday night and it's time to 10-Year Tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the mod master, that is Mark. Um, you may well notice I am suffering uh, this week from a little thing called um, man flu yet again. Um, having a daughter at school and bringing home untold germs is uh, is one of the pleasures of having kids. Uh, couldn't think of any others, but you know what I'm saying. And apparently my wife has been doing a little bit of research on the net um, and man flu does actually exist. Um, apparently women just get colds um, and men do get it a damn sight, you know. Yeah, it's proven. Uh, my, even my wife admitted it this weekend, which was uh, actually a revelation, um, shall we say. And and she did, once she discovered that fact, she rushed down to Sainsbury's and come back with the man-sized tissues with aloe vera. Bless her. It, it doesn't work. I still have a face looking like I've been slapped by cat for not including her in the start of the show. Do apologise. <laughs> I got a right rollicking back then. Um, Sorry, cat. All is forgiven, I'm sure. And yes, I still am one. Um, what have we got lined up for you this week? Well, this week um, is the final part of uh, my um, trip down DNA Avenue, shall we say. Um, and I have ended up um, with a, a fully working... Hmm? most pleasurable um, mod um, however there was a little a little little twisty in our in our journey um, on, on the DNA uh, which we will show you a little bit later on um, just show me one of our wonderful members who we do have in chat sent me something to mod so this week down on on the uh, on the bench on the bench cam uh, this is what I've been working on this weekend um, I know that that Kerry wanted me to do something uh, with her tin and she said she was going to be sending me a uh, a tin to mod. Now I'm sure most of you that, that are sort of uh, regulars to the show will, will understand um, what that is. Uh, it is a usual VV tin mod uh, with a display and this and the other. Most strangely it is a coffin. Um, I will show you at some point how we did that um, but if you look down in the bottom of the tin the batteries were an absolute bug to get down there. We had to hack out some of the uh, the battery housing to make that fit. But uh, we like that one. Yes, it's it's a little uh, little coffin tin. Um, I've been doing lots of coffin this week myself, so it was quite apt that we did that. One. Uh, Mark this week is going to be, um, I believe, uh, recycling. He's revisiting uh, a mod that he did he done previously, and making something new and spankly out of it, which is one of the beauties of modding. Um, lots of different things. What I'm going to do, I'm going to crack in to my next little bit of uh, of my DNA journey. And then we'll pop into Mark's first vid. Uh, where I left you last week, I'd, uh, I'd done all my testing. Um, everything was, was working uh, as it should do. And uh, I was just about to go on to making the display a permanent fixture to my new piece of wood. Um, with all that said, I shall pop into this and catch you back in two, where I must run into the house and uh, have my wife mop my brow because I, I do have man flu. See you in a bit. Right, well, I'm, uh, I'm back again and uh, I've sort of continued from from where I was last week in in not 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 in terms of uh, of um, when I say continue I've carried straight on filming right the way through whereas normally I would leave if you like uh, I would put it on the bench to one side and and leave it for the week and uh, and away you go couldn't do it with this mod. Um, I've got so enthused with it. Um, so I carried on and uh, I had to save this bit for you. Um, mentioned last week what I was going to do with the display, um, which was to get that epoxied in. Now, I've, I've literally, I was, I was going to film doing this. It become too fiddly and too downright dangerous of, of uh, ripping the display off the board. And at this stage, I'm being very, very careful because... Um, oh, I need to, to feed this back over and blah blah blah. I want to get the, the, the board fixed in place um, and, and secure before I start messing any further with it. My next stage uh, that I'm going to do, I've, I've still got my two little holes down here for my switches. Now in this epoxy I've left room for my uh, my two switches to go and, and these are going to be, as mentioned, my up and down switch for the, uh, for the uh, wattage settings. 
Um, so they're in there. But essentially, what I do have, if I turn this over very carefully and show you, is my display mounted in there. Um, I did remember to take off the, uh, off the form. I've got it as level as I could because it, it was so hard um, messing with it. But uh, my little display is now in my window. Um, it's not perfectly perfect, but that is damn near good enough for me. Um, so now what I'm going to do is mix up some more epoxy. Uh, I've got everything that I need. I've, I've got my, my wattage set in, I've got like, my resistance, my anti and, and my battery level. That's good. It's all, vis it's all very visible. I can see it. Um, job is a good one, as they say. Um, so that is now setting in the epoxy. I'll just take the battery out and I'll flip this back over while I do that. Again, I'm being very, very careful not to uh, not to knock my uh, my ribbon off. I see exactly where Mark is coming from now. It is so fiddly. It is incredible. Um, so I thought if I get my display fixed, get me two buttons in, um, and then I can flip this over and secure it. Um, temporary means at the moment. I'm just going to put a little double-sided sticky tab stick it to their um, temporary measure just so uh, there's no damage on the ribbon and then all, all my fixed points are essentially on the other side um, so I can start to piecing this together this week for you now. I'm going to go away I'm going to get these switches tested um, prior to epoxying them in um, and uh, the reason I'm doing this in, in a separate chunk um, in here is because if I need to replace the switch um, I can pull that out um, and change them. Uh, so there we go. Pop away, I'll be back in two. Well, what I've got planned for this week is to do a bit of recycling. And this is an old case that I've ripped out all the guts from because they weren't working anymore. And I thought I might recycle this into a slightly different device. So what I'm thinking about doing is chopping off this top section so I make a nice very short 18650 mod with a switch to the side. So I thought I might make a nice change. So first thing I won't need that because I'm only going to use a single battery. And again I'll lose this spring, which I'll show you later on. And I just need to cut off this top section. So, I'll start off with, I need the Dremel, and I'm just going to use a cutting blade just to hack away at it basically, so apologies for the noise. Of melted plastic, which I can just trim off when I'm done. And I seem to have gone rather skewed with. So, I just need to strip. the process on the back cover. What I'm looking for is to leave a bit of a lip around here 
to fill with epoxy. And what I have planned is to run a length of paper, a length of wire from this positive contact, push it down flat and through this hole at the base, so it'll come into here. So easier than trying to get it off this side and back through. So I'll pop that through there and then I'll have the atomizer attached here. So the next job is going to be to sand this off flat with the back plate in place. Sand it all off flat and then fill with epoxy. I'll sand it back when I'm ready to sand it. Yeah, finish sanding. So I've given the top a quick sand off just to get rid of any rough bits. I'm not too worried about it being straight and what have you at this point because that will become more important once I get this filled with epoxy and I can sand down the entire surface in one flat part so it looks like it's meant to be. So cut off a bit of wire, I'm just going to pop that through the hole, there we go, that goes through. I just want to solder this wire onto this positive contact. So I need to tin everything off the first one. So, tin up the iron. And give a nice tin to the wire. You do have to get a bit of heat and do for a bit of tea. It'd help, I suppose, if I turned it around the right way so I could see what I was doing. So you just want to raise it with some light, so you just need to keep adding heat until it flows onto the metal. Flatten this all down as far as possible. Which is maybe easier said than done with all this soldering on. Right, well, I've currently got my, uh, my board um, setting. Um, I've made me sandwich on, on the back of my. Uh, on the back of me display thing that I've got here and my DNA board is now sat on the top. Now I've tested it all, I know it works. Um, I'm making this a permanent mod so I'm not too bothered about having that fixed in situ. While that is setting, um, and then simply for, for, for the purpose of this I'll be able to literally, he says, hoping that it's going to work, um, position me board over the top of here and literally solder all my wires on, flip this round and drop it in as we said where it's going to go, um, hopefully. First thing I'm going to do um, while, that's all, uh, while that's all drying and stuff, I'm going to stick that to one side. And there was a few twitchy moments there with, um, with uh, ribbing cables. Um, yes, hopefully, hopefully we've, we've We've overcome that now, um, he says. Uh, it could all still go wonky um, and over until the fat lady sings and she ain't home so she can't sing. Um, oh, I'm so dead. What I'm going to do, as I mentioned uh, last week, I need to, if you like, test out my me, uh, me bits in my board just to make sure that I've, I've not got um, any uh, 
shorts or anything like that, make sure my switches are working and, and all that malarkey before we start putting stuff together. Um, so what I'm going to do very quickly, firstly is, is test my ATI connection, um, simply on the continuity test or the beep with the fluke. Little beep there, I'm going to touch the outer pin and, and the inner pin on here, make sure I've got no shorts, nothing at all. That's all working fine. And then what I'm going to do is, is just test the um, continuity through from a middle pin on this to my wire, which I've got. Test it through again, neg to the wire. So I'm testing out the, uh, the wiring before I go. So test out my pause, neg on in. I've got my beep through, so I've got my continuity. Other thing I need to check is the integrity of my switch. So I'm just going across the pins there. Hit me button. I know my fire switch is okay. Onto my uh, neg pin of my battery terminal. Hit me wire, test me spring. I've got a connection there. And I know that on my pos I should have a connection through to my pos plate. He says if he was to be touching the right part of it. So very quickly, uh, you know, proving out the um, the wiring, as it were. Now I'm going to pop away, and, and when I do come back, um, we're going to make the first two connections on our DNA board. Um, excited about this one. I'll pop back in two. Right. Well, I've uh, I've already started wiring up my uh, my DNA board. Um, obviously, my two switches that I've uh, sandwiched uh, behind this board here. Um, I've run my cables out and obviously pre-soldered those before sandwiching them in. Um, I'm now in a position where I am. It'd be like running uh, these wires out to to the board itself. Um, and very simply, um, I've, I've realised as well that, that I may have got this round the wrong way ever so slightly. Um, I'm not sure which way the switches will be uh, be running. Um, but I'm just soldering up my last two little switches on there. And those are going to be for my, my ups and downs. Um, and they are all in the, uh, in the one unit. There we go. So all nice and neat now. My little self-contained uh, unit with the switches on. Um, got my two switches on the front there. The ones that I've just soldered up, up and down. Got my DNA board all sandwiched on on the back of my uh, my little um, sort of inserty board that I've made to uh, to to go in the I think it's a pirate mod. This one. Now I'm not 100% sure exactly um, how I'm gonna. Uh, approach the next phase but it is probably going to be like a boy in a china shop I am going to need um, effectively something or some way of, uh, of, of gauging where everything's going to go um, at the moment I'm just going to position my, my board on top now as you can see the reason I, I took out this extra nogging here um, last week was purely down to the fact that I need to get this board in. Now you can see with that nogging out where that is going to sit in the depth of there. Um, it's not interrupting the switch. Uh, we had a good measure up obviously beforehand. Uh, but I'm about to hollow all this out so when that slides in over the top of there that won't interrupt the switch either. And all of my gubbins will fall down in the hole that we made. So you could say it was sort of a plan. Now I'm going to bring in, I think bring in some, uh, it's going to be too tall. I need to bring something in roughly around about the same same height to get my board uh, there. So I can start making my, my connections up and, um, yeah, he's thinking. It's not working, but he's thinking. I'll come away. I need to find something to secure this to. Let me come away. I'll pop back in two and, uh, and we'll take a look at where we go. And there we go, we're back in the room once again. And if you were very observant in that last little section of video, you may have heard the SO-19 helicopter circling overhead, um, taking x-ray visions through the roof 
of my new contraption. Um, I'm sure they do have good pictures now and uh, there'll be no airplanes in the next little section of clips. With all that said, it is time to go into our first little eye break. I'll catch you back very shortly after this. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. in Yorkshire for your EC games. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk approach sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Liberty Flight sponsors 10-year tip with Gary Dibley. And there we are, we're back in the room again. Those, uh, those adverts go very, very, very quickly. Um, I've just been, I've been playing, I've been trying this damn big Kerry. Um, it's rather big, but I'm gonna, she wanted to see it working. There we go, it's nice. Very nice. I will say this week uh, or a couple of weeks ago, um, I actually uh, for, I learned something um, from watching Vapor Trails TV, which which was good. Um, I was watching uh, Mr. Kitson on on his show where he did a little bit about um, mixing, and uh, I was rather intrigued because me and Dave do have sort of the same taste in juice, um, and uh, he was doing a, a a thing where he was doing the um, uh, DY4. Um, and I mixed, I, 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 I like the sound of it, shall I say. Uh, so I, I went straight out and went to the, um, to the DV website and I bought some concentrate because I did have some, uh, some liquid lying around. Had a little mix and that uh, made a batch. And I must say, it is really damn good stuff. Um, nice, it's been steeping for a little while now. And it's definitely biscuity, that's all I can say. Um, but it's nice, it's, it's sort of like the, uh, if you like the, the Kentucky premium blend stuff, same sort of stuff. Anyway, on with the uh, with the videos, that's enough waffle from me yet again. Um, we're going into Mark's second little bit about his, uh, his mod recycling. Um, and then we're going to uh, actually start wiring up the, um, the DNA. Um, you might want to watch that bit. If I pull away a tate, I should just be able to get everything below what would be the level of the epoxy. Just use the pliers a bit to flatten out the wire. The joint, and hopefully, that will do it. I'm now below the level, so when I put the epoxy in, hopefully, that will be all out of the way and invisible. We shall see. I'll be back when I get the epoxy. So, it's time to mix up some epoxy. And once again, I'm using the quality two part smooth epoxy. I'll find that. Simply a matter of 
trying to get a even mix of the two pieces. And just thoroughly mash and mix something in, mash something in. Might be later do it. Let's see, with this one it takes quite a while to set, so there's no real hurry about how quickly you have to do this. Unlike the cheaper ones which set very quickly indeed. But I've gone over all this before. So just mix till you get a good even colour. And just think I'll do. A matter of popping it on the top. And for this, I want to build up quite a layer above to protect this and to give a flat surface on top as much as possible. So, I'm just popping it in and totally covering over the front edge. Sand it down eventually. And wherever possible, try it if you're using separate bits like I've just done, try and smooth them all in together as much as you possibly can and avoid that here filling in the tracks if at all possible they will just make life so much more difficult when you put the lid on. Quick test is to pop the lid back on. And then hopefully that will give you a rough idea of what you need to fill in. Like that. So that's pretty much done. To match it up, I want to try and get a little bit along this top edge of this as well. I've got no idea if this is going to work or it'll just all snap off when I come to do it. But I shall give it a go and see. Well, to be honest, I've got no idea if any of this is going to work because I've never tried it before. Should be a good learning experience for all of us. And I could just throw this case away, but I really hate to get rid of stuff. I'm rather a holder when it comes to bits and pieces. Thinking that oh, well, that could come in useful at some point. Quite often I do. Sometimes I don't. But if it all goes wrong, I lose very little. Because I would have thrown this all away anyway. What's the cost of a bit of epoxy? Just pennies, really. So it's always worth messing around with this stuff. If it goes wrong, you just bin it. And if it works out, you got a new mod. Is trying to keep the inside of this as clear as possible. The outside is easy enough to file there, file or sand away, but the inside, not so much. So, this is pretty much done. it all set. Of course at this point as well I would advise taking a damp cloth and just using it to smooth off any bits 
which can save a lot of time later on. It does tend to stick to your fingers otherwise. Having long fingernails at this point can come in very handy. There we go. See when it's set. Right, so I've decided just to flip my little uh, my little unit over to uh, to solder up some of the wires. I've I've trimmed back me my battery terminals or my battery wires, um, and I'm just going to get those in place now. Uh, you have to excuse me. I'm going as blind as a bat, so I need to look at which way these are going round. Bear me one second. That would be the way. So let me just get my pos wire on. And I say this is it's going to be fiddly. This and it's going to be tight. So I'm just getting my pos wire on there. Let me just get my neck wire on there. So my battery now has a connection. So I need to, to, the way that I'm going to be working this, I need to leave enough room to be able to spin this over to uh, to, to get it in place. Um, so my next two wires I think I'm going to add, and what I'm going to do as I'm doing this, I'm just going to, you can see we've got a bird's nest going on in here. I'm just going to feed my two atty wires through. And they're going to run up to my output here. So let me just trim them. I'm going to run them that way across the top. Let me just take them back. And obviously, what I've done previously is is proved out my, uh, if you like, my that I've got no shorts or nothing in the mod before we go forth. So I'm just tin up me, me two wires that are going to go on me fire or not me fire, but me uh, me output on the uh, on the DNA. I'm just going to trim them back ever so slightly, and I'm just going to solder those up on the top on my output, I'll see if I can go down for this. This is really, really, really fiddly. Put my pause on that. And my neg yep. on that. Which I'm gonna have to bring that way just a tad. As I say, bloody fiddly. That's my pos and neg on there going out to my atomizer connection. Now my final connection, and again I'm going to feed these wires back through the box. My final connection that needs to go on is going to be for my fire wires. And I'm just going to bring them across the top round about there. So I apologise if this this is um, difficult to see, but it's there's there's so many wires in here. Too much solder on the end of that. Always tinning up as you go. And this is my fire switch, which I'm going to run down across the fire terminals. So, theoretically, there are all our connections. Now, 
we should theoretically be working. What I'm going to do is, is put a Etsy on the top there. Bear me one sec. This is our mid tank slipping like buggery. Let me stick the battery in. Now, bizarrely, I don't have my display up. Hit the fire button. I'm vaping. Definitely vaping. Let me try my fire button. We're definitely vaping. But for some reason, my display that was working is no longer working. What the hell would that be? It was all tested before and all we've done differently is wire it up. My ribbon's still in place. My ribbon's definitely still in place. It's not come adrift anywhere. It's interesting. It's all still there, look. Come back in two. All right, well, I am at a bit of a loss and I now know exactly how Mark feels. I've got me, me ribbon strip is perfectly in place. Um, I've checked there's no damage to the ribbon strip at all. Um, I know it's fine in the other end. Um, it was all working before I wired it up. Um, the mod is, is working perfectly. Um, everything works as it should. Um, it's just I've got no bloody display. Um, I've tried everything uh, at a loss at the moment. At a bit of a loss. Um, everything's definitely wired up properly. Um, I've had this working in, out, and everywhere. It's um, maybe when I clamped it together, I knocked it off a little bit. I just I'm at a total, total loss. I mean, it's it's vaping. Um, uh, I know I'm at about seven watts at the moment. I've just metered the voltage, and it works. It's damn nice. It's very nice. But I'm at a loss as to why the display's gone. I really am. Um, I'm going to have another look. I'm going to have another look. I'll piece it together. Come back. And uh, and if I'm crying, you know that it's uh, it's, for some reason gone wonky donkey and all that work on making the display fit was um, a <laughs> waste of time. Uh, but I'll come back and we'll have a look. See you in two. And there we go. You could uh, you could say I mullered it, um, but I don't think I did. Um, and that isn't the end of the video. There is one more to come. So uh, you'll have to uh, have to wait and see where we where we go with that one as I slip into my second ad break um, and a uh, another cup of cocoa. I'll see you back after this in two. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And welcome back. And as I say, at this moment in time, all is not lost. You'll have to wait to see uh, what happened in the in the last little video. Um, moving forwards from, from here, um, again, uh, a plea out to you guys. If there's anything you want to see on this show, um, just let me know. Let Mark know. Type in the forum in Facebook and all of that sort of stuff. And while you're here, don't forget to share us. Um, share and like. Even if you don't like me, share me. Um, simple as that. Uh, yeah, we, we're looking at we're looking for ideas and things like that. And if anybody comes up with the idea of actually fixing the DNA screen, I might kick you. Um, but with all that said, I, I believe uh, I was ever so slightly unlucky um, with that one. But all isn't lost, as I say. We'll, we'll be looking at that again ever so slightly in a minute. Um, so yes, if you guys have got any ideas, anything you, you want to see on the show, um, please let any of the team know. Um, go onto our webpage. It's all been, I believe, it's, if it's not already, it's, it's all fancy and new. And uh, Mr. K has been working very, very hard on that. Um, coming up this week, uh, tomorrow, don't forget, we have got uh, Vapor Scene. And then on Wednesday, um, we have the return of Dave Dorm from what he has attended today. Um, and I can assure you, apparently it was no vape meat. Um, but he's going to be bringing you all the news uh, from that on Wednesday. On Thursday, we have the two lovely guys, um, Dave and Keith, if he's around. And rolling right, I keep forgetting Mr. Sutton. Mr. S can't forget Mr. Sutton on Saturdays now. What I mean, this you know, I mean, my wife has been so excited about getting out and bleeding deck back on telly, and we've got Mr. Sutton. What more do you want on a Saturday night? Um, and then on Sunday, Mr. Kitson and uh, and his box of tackle. Um, and I'll be watching him for some more mixing tips, I think. Um, yes, very, very good. I'm going to carry on with the videos. Enough waffling from me. Um, I think the pills are kicking in. Um, they're giving me verbal diarrhea tonight, and I hope that's the only kind they do give me. Um, back with our last little part of, uh, of Mark's recycling vid. <coughs> As I thought when I was putting the epoxy onto this back cover part, it really hasn't taken the game away very easily. So, that's going to be slightly lower than the rest. But it's all nicely dried now. And solid so it's time to sand it off. Normally when I'd sand it off I'm looking to sand it off completely flat. Uh, sorry, completely flush with the top. So it gives one nice big layer, but in this case I'm more interested in just flattening the surface off because there's a wire inside here, which I can't forget. So I'll be doing the sanding over the wire. So and just take your coarse sandpaper on a flat surface and just sand away. And if you use a coarse paper, it can very quickly flatten right off. I'll be back when I've done that. So now I've I have a chance to give it a good sanding down and you know, a pretty flat surface there, I just need to clean up the coarse scratches using a much finer paper, so it's exactly the same process as before, I just want, but now I'm just trying to polish it up rather than Sound away, so 
the more gentle. I'm trying to find a circular motion to avoid harsh lines in the door. A little bit of water can help. I'm using the wet and dry paper like this. Just to create a more polished effect. We'll finish that off and we'll be back when it's time to drill. <laughs> so then, we've got a nice surface to work with here. Nice and smooth, looks rather neat. Next job is to get the holes in. So, positive is on this side, so the atomizer connector is going to want to go in this area. And as I'm just doing a single battery device, I don't need to worry about whatever tank or whatever you put on overhanging this side so you couldn't open the door because you're not going to want to really get into here at all so I'm aiming for something fairly central with the drill I'm not too worried about exactly where it goes so I'll just pile up here. for the switch so just move the pull a bit out of the way I'm just gonna wanna drill a hole somewhere near the top and again somewhere fairly central to the case bit as normal, which I've pre-marked out for the depth I want for the atomizer connector, because of everything, the one thing you really need to avoid when you're drilling a hole is making the hole for the atomizer connector in particular too big, because that just cause you all kinds of problems. Let the drill pull itself through, otherwise, you risk cracking the epoxy. So, just pop that in. And that is a pretty good fit, it needs a little bit of work inside, but quick go over with sandpaper or so I'll fix that. And for the switch, I'm going to use this low profile switch, it needs a 13mm hole. So near enough half an inch, which means this entire drill bit basically. So just making sure the wire's out of the way. Just drill through. Plus making sure fingers are out of the way also. Right, well I've pasted uh, the rest of it back together. 
um, literally as I say I've, I've fitted my my top board in um, from the bit that we've routed out um, top cap still fits in nicely um, and not a ounce of damage to the box other than a uh, slight internal modification now my display for some reason isn't now firing um, when I've tested it all the way through uh, my two buttons on the top uh, my, my plus uh, for the wattage and the minus they are working perfectly the mod is firing and is vaping very very nicely really disappointed about that um, it works it's great it does does what it should do but I, I can't for the life of me work out why um, why that's gone wonky but as you can see this is where you know we we should have had a, a nice display up there to show you guys um, but we don't <laughs> it's one of those things sod's law it's probably something I've done I don't know what I've done but um, I may have I may have ever so slightly tweaked the uh, the the cable on there or, or something but I've been as careful as buggery with it all the way through um, <laughs> the one thing I didn't want to happen happened I may well uh, fiddle tinker and get it working again I, I don't know um, but in terms of a chapter uh, I'm gonna close this one on, on this mod uh, for once actually something did go right for me um, which was wood um, and uh, I think it worked out rather nicely in the end um, converting this to uh, to take the panel to take the uh, display and everything worked out lovely um, display bugger um, I'm sure we're all having a good laugh in chat and I'm sure Mark is uh, is over the moon um, <laughs> with my results <laughs> um, but yes would I make another one most definitely would I be more careful with the display um, I, don't, I don't know if I could be um, it's it's a wonderful wonderful little um, gadget. The 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 vape on it straight away is 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 incredible. But um, disappointed on the display. I I just don't know why that's gone. I, I'm uh, I'm going to do the stupid thing. I'm assuming it's it's not me uh, me battery. So I'm going to put put a, get another battery. Pop another battery. And this display pops up now. I'll be um, mortified. It didn't. No. I'm still vaping. Yeah, a bit disappointing, but uh, but it works and it it, it, it goes to show a um, bit of care and attention. I've, I've I've taken more care over over the wood um, today, and uh, it certainly paid off. I do believe. So back to me in the studio. Um, we can call it a uh, we can chalk this one up as a success. Um, I think. Um, but a, a display failure. As I say, I will play if I get it to work. Happy days. If not, I'm happy with it as it is, to be honest. Because um, oh, with once it was once it's set, it, I would have left it set anyway. Um, you know, but I could have done away with all the jiggery poetry. I still probably would have done the same. It was a good learning experience anyway. Back to me in the studio. And there we go. Unfortunately, uh, yes, as you can see, my little display didn't actually come up, um, come up trumps. I really am at a loss with that one. Uh, I know I've been looking at the chat. There's been a few suggestions there. I, I have um, probably rebuilt that thing five times for the even last night. I was sat there last night and uh, stripped it all down again. Took all the wires off cleaned out and uh, with with the uh, solder braid and and made sure that there was nothing chalking on the board this and the other i have i have read um i did a bit of research i did read on on some of the forums that some people have had the same sort of um failure um where where the, the, you know th there's been a couple of things i believe with with the particular board now the board i do love however i do think there could be a couple of um potential improvements for me, one, I, I would love to see that that display um, with, I, you know, if it was me personally, I would like to see that display with uh, a detachable display um, that potentially come as an option. If you just want the board, you could you could have the display later. Um, 
clip it on and potentially with a couple of different lengths of, of ribbing cable um, you know to, to suit and mold and, and put where you want um, but that's just me personally the, the board does its job and, and I will say um, compared to uh, in terms of the, the variable wattage compared to if you like a, a VAMO uh, at 7 watts that really does kick it out um, over and above um, comparing the two I would pick that one up every time in terms of vaping experience um, it, it's a lovely board it is brilliant but there I believe and my own opinion I believe there are some some shortcomings with it um, that, that hopefully will, will be looked at and addressed and I would most definitely love to have uh, a, a play with with the uh, version 2 um, but yeah, I've, I learned a lot on that journey, um, looking through there. I, I took a lot of care over the wood, um, and I actually found if I, if I sit back and, and think about what I'm doing, rather than going at it like a bull in a china shop, um, I can actually, uh, I, could, I could make something quite nice, he thinks. So I may well take on another wood challenge. Um, I'm not going to chunk that up as a wood fell, because in terms of wood, um, I hollowed it out where I need it to be, I made my little top cap and everything fitted and it all come together nicely and didn't look half bad, if I dare say so myself. Um, so yeah, a little care and attention I think uh, on, on the wood made it made it a much more pleasurable job as well. Um, the one thing I didn't like um, was clearing up all the dust afterwards. I will definitely be routing outside next time. <laughs> that is That is most definitely a lesson learned. I do believe, if you're watching this on the replay, um, Daz has put up in our forum, which is uh, vaportrails.tv, I do believe, um, slashy forum thing, on, on the replay or on, on our uh, site, there is a link that takes you straight to the forum. We have opened up in the tenure tip section there, somewhere where you can post your suggestions. Um, so whiz over there, have a look. Um, if, you, if you're live, whiz over, stick anything down there within reason um, and, uh, and we'll do our best uh, parts and materials and all that sort of stuff uh, willing and available and this that, and the other we will most certainly try to do it for you um, with all that said I am running very very close to time uh, thanks again this week to Mark for his, uh, his superb vids um, apologies for uh, my shortcomings uh, with the uh, with the display um, but it's working I've been using it daily so I'm going to say good night now guys and uh, thanks for watching and I will see you back here next week for what we don't know it's uh, it's whatever is going to be available and to hand um, and I'm sure it'll be the same to Mark uh, catch you next week cheers now if he can find the credits <laughs> he's lost some bloody end credits <laughs> there we go right good night guys Sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.